Hatchbacks and compact sedans continue to remain popular choices, but people upgrading from here are likely to now choose SUVs and crossovers. And that is the very reason why the executive or the premium sedan segments have taken a massive hit. One that has led to the demise of cars like the Civic and the Corolla. Now, the Elantra continues to soldier on, but one name that is very popular, that people seem very interested in, is the Octavia. That is a good news and a ray of hope for Skoda India because there is now a new one. It wears a sharper style and a space lettering on the boot. The trademark C motif in the taillights isn't as prominent but looks edgier. And there is now a two-piece taillight design. There is a grinning front bumper too, like the Superb. Crisper lines and prominent creases for the shoulder and the clamshell bonnet, a more angular grille and a very coupe-like silhouette for its notchback body style. Of course, it looks very understated in a very Skoda fashion. But you won't mistake the Octavia for something else. Though, in a passing glance, the uninitiated might think of this to be a car from Ingolstadt, especially with those Audi TT-like DRL signatures. Now, these headlights, they incorporate adaptive LED lamps, which mean they auto-level, they'll also turn with your steering wheel. And though I've not been able to record it, let me tell you that these work exceptionally well at night. Also, I'm very glad that they've gone back to a single-piece headlight design. And when I say gone back, this is not a facelift, this is an all-new Octavia. It's based on the MQB Evo platform, like the Audi A3. And the new Octavia is now longer, wider and taller than the outgoing car, despite sitting on a hard-to-notice, marginally shorter wheelbase. Now, the design of the front end could polarise buyers. Some might say that it needed to look a bit more imposing or needed to have more design flair to keep prospective buyers from looking at crossovers, while others might say that the classic styling elements or the sharp and the smart lines uh, will make this car age better, like the Mark 1 Octavia did. I agree with the latter, because going radical may not always help. Look at what happened to the Civic. It was a good-looking car, but we all know where that ended. Though the Octavia doesn't have a shouty design, its nose and body are sharper than before, making it more aerodynamic. It has a drag coefficient of 0.24, which makes it more slippery than any Skoda Octavia RS models, including its own fourth-generation RS sibling, which is likely to arrive into India in 2022. The Octavia will let you make a choice between the classic white or black, whereas the range-topping LNK will also let you make a choice between a brown and a silver. But I think this lava blue looks the best. It looks sporty during the day, elegant in the evening, and it's available in both the trims. Now, the LNK uh, will also get you a little bit more chrome garnish. I think it's very tastefully done. There's not too much blink, and it certainly has the better wheel design. Step in, and you will be welcomed by an equally well appointed interior. The cabin, too, is very understated in a very Skoda fashion, but you're likely to appreciate it. I, for one, certainly like the minimalist layout that you see in here. The virtual cockpit, it's crisp, easy to read, just like the easy to use and the slick MIB3 infotainment. Now, this is a 10.25 inch screen and because this is MIB3, it's more responsive, it's easier to use. Uh, the layout is quite nice as well. It's compatible with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and MirrorLink wirelessly, which is a big deal. You also get a wireless charger. And not just that, uh, you also get a high-grade, 12 speaker Canton audio on the LNK trim and believe me it sounds exceptionally good. There is an air filtration system on board and the cooling efficiency is quite good but the central AC vents are placed lower and the flow usually cools the lower body or the arms with no draft to the face which may or may not be to everyone's liking. The AC controls are a part of the infotainment and that works well as long as you're using the automatic climate control. But it can get cumbersome if you want to change the fan speed, for example. Unsafe too because you have to take your eyes off the road to make these changes. Now below the screen sits a tastefully done control for the power and the volume. It's very soundbar-like and I also like the fact that you can simply just slide your finger and it goes to mute. It's a very nicely, thoughtfully done function, very tastefully done at that. And below that sits another minimal switch gear which has all the essential controls that you would want easy access for like the hazard light switch for example or the door locks uh, i think they should have also uh, included one programmable switch you already have these two 
empty switches right here. They should have included one programmable switch, uh, which uh, you could use like a hotkey for maybe pulling up the AC controls or uh, maybe just, you know, directly going to Apple CarPlay. It would have been a nice shortcut key and I think that's a missed opportunity. And since we are on the topic of switches, I really like the design of these roll and click switches. They have a nice knurled uh, design or texture to them, which feels good to the touch. But all that I would have asked for is slightly more weight on these switches, especially this press function. It doesn't feel as tactile as the rest of the switches. That would have just elevated the feel of these switches a lot more. But overall, I like the design and the feel of it. There are multiple themes to choose from for the infotainment and the instruments. And while some might find them to be a bit too dark and drab, I think you might prefer it in the long run compared to the overly colorful layouts, which can get distracting. But if you need color, you can liven up the mood of the cabin with an ambient lighting package anyway. Skoda should have thrown in connected tech though, because some of the cheaper cars get it now. That said, the cabin has a sizable list of safety features to secure its occupants. The materials used and the fit and finish is just as good as you would expect in a premium sedan of this order. Also, the black and beige combination that you had on the previous uh, Skoda cars is gone. You get a new black and grey combination now and I think it's a welcome change. Though I'm intrigued to see how these materials and how these colours and how all these patterns are going to age. Uh, you have this nice piano black finish or insert in the dashboard. Uh, but it is a fingerprint magnet and what has me worried is the fact that it could pick up scratches as we move on because that's clearly happening to the matching inlays that you have in the door pads. Uh, speaking of the door pads, uh, you used to have that nice nifty dustbin in the previous Octavia in the door pad uh, or the door pocket and that is now gone. Uh, but these door pockets are now nicely lined with a soft felt lining. I think uh, they should have complemented it, uh, that premium feel of it, with soft touch materials even on the door handles. You only get those soft touch materials here on the dashboard. You also have this suede finish on the dashboard and also on the seats. It reminds me of the Alcantara line seats from the Octavia RS. I think it looks quite nice. Uh, the only thing that it leaves me wanting for is a ventilation function on these seats. At this particular price point, it definitely should have been included. Uh, what the front passenger seat also gets is Isofix child seat mounts. So if you think about it, uh, the Octavia or the Citroën C5 Aircross are the least that you would have to buy if you want a child seat in the front. If there are other cars that offer it at a uh, lower price point, I am probably not aware of it. If you know of them, do let me know in the comments below. The comfort in the rear seat is quite good too. In fact, the contouring is quite nice. The angle of the backrest is very comfortable even for long distance journeys. Also, these extended squabs in the seat make for better under thigh support. Now, because of the increased width of the car, you get better shoulder room as well. But because you also have this tunnel in the floor, this arrangement is only good for two adults and a kid. Now, even if you were to place the kids on the outer sides of the seats, they won't really complain much because the window line is nice and low, so visibility is excellent. Those looking for a more cozier feel get these retractable window blinds. And those wanting an airier feel than what this cabin already offers, well, you're going to miss the sunroof. Nowhere around the world does the Octavia sedan get the sunroof anymore. It's only on the estate. Both the front seats are powered, but more importantly, the seating comfort is excellent. And a 200 km journey that we did with this car agreed with that. It's still a very roomy place to be in. And some chauffeur-driven buyers might even choose the Octavia over the Superb if they don't need the additional room. But if you have bad knees or back, you might prefer the wider doors and aperture of the Superb for easier ingress and egress. Or a simply cleverer idea would be to get a crossover. The Octavia sedan or liftback seen here has a massive 600-litre boot space. And it gets lots of cargo on it because Skoda likes to add such versatility under its simply clever tag. Other such clever bits include the trademark umbrella pockets in the doors, a washer for the exposed reversing camera, a funnel and filter for the windshield washer reservoir, traction dots in the front cup holders that make one-handed bottle opening quite easy, touch-sensitive reading lamps, and there's also a roof-mounted USB-C port for powering dash cams, cradle mounts, etc. Quite a thoughtful addition, that. It will reduce all the cable clutter that could otherwise intrude in your field of vision. Speaking of which, uh, the visibility is quite good. The cornering visibility is also quite nice. You can't see that low-slung bonnet that easily, but the A-pillars are not too thick, 
So getting a judgment of uh, the corners of the car is very easy. Cornering visibility is quite good. So visibility is certainly not a concern from the driver's seat. In fact, you get that nice and airy feel. But at the same time, I think at this particular price point, they should have included a 360 degree camera. It could be of a lot of help when you are in tight parking spaces because at the end of the day, this is a long sedan. The Volkswagen Group is not going to offer any diesel engines in any of its group brands, at least until 2023. That is when the BS6 Stage B norms come out. So at least till then is the 2-litre TSI that will continue to lead the charge for the Octavia. Now the 1-litre TSI option was always there but that would have been uh, a little too small to go with the premium positioning of this car. There was the hybrids as well but the hybrids would have made the car more expensive. The 1.5 TSI with the 150 PS, we've seen it in the Karok, it's coming in the Kushak. That engine might also make sense for this car uh, at least to bring down the entry price point but that could be considered at a later stage. For now, it is the 2-litre engine and there's nothing wrong with it. I think the 2-litre engine, uh, in fact, uh, marries very nicely with the kind of car this is. Uh, it's got 190 PS of power and the 320 Newton meters of torque, it's available from as low as 1500 RPM. So you're never really going to feel the dearth of power in this car at all, whether you're driving in the city or out on the highway. In fact, on the highway with that kind of torque coming in at such a low RPM, it runs in a very relaxed manner, almost like a diesel engine. So you don't really have to rev high for, uh, you know, maintaining good highway speeds. And that clearly shows in great fuel economy for the highway as well. In the city, of course, the economy is not as good as a diesel. And the diesel was always a strong point for the Octavia. So some people are going to miss that uh, with the new Octavia. But we all know where the fuel prices are going. And probably with that, and probably with the development costs of diesel uh, in the current scheme of things, uh, you know, people wouldn't have even preferred buying a diesel with a car like the Octavia right now. So that is where Skoda is betting big on the petrol engine. The beauty of the engine is that it runs relaxed at highway speeds, like I said. In the city, it does its job extremely well. And when you're in that lighter mood, maybe around winding roads, it obliges right away. The 190 PS, it's a very eager engine. The engine is mated to the DQ381 wet clutch gearbox, which is said to be more reliable than the DQ200 dry clutch gearbox. If you still have your apprehensions about uh, the reliability of the gearbox, there is a comprehensive 4 plus 2 warranty that is available on this car, which I think should uh, put at least some of those concerns to ease. Now, the gearbox itself, it's a 7-speed DSG. Uh, it does its job quite well, whether you're driving in the city, whether you're driving on the highway, you suddenly want to pull over, takes and build speed. The upshifts, downshifts, they all come nice and quick. So, the overall predictability of the gearbox is quite nice. The behavior is quite good. And if you do need manual override, there is always the paddle shifters behind the wheel. Of course, these are the only way to engage a manual mode because on the gear selector here in the tunnel console, you do not get any way to move into a manual mode. You only have drive and sport. Yes, mode on the gear selector is the only sport mode you will get, but the engine never revs all the way to the humble 6000 RPM redline. Honestly, you would seldom need to rev that high unless you're on a drag strip maybe. The engine isn't too noisy either and save for the tyre hum on concrete roads, the noise insulation of the cabin is fairly good, though maybe not as silent as the outgoing Superb. It's a pity that this powertrain doesn't come with driving modes, it certainly deserves them. The engine, it doesn't lurch forward all the time like an angry puppy, but you have to be measured with the throttle because even a slight bit of dab on the throttle pedal, be a little bit heavy with your right foot and you immediately realise that these 190 horses are just eager to deliver. And that's not a bad feeling, but it's one that needs getting used to. Similarly, even the engine braking is quite sharp. Especially when you are in that enthusiastic driving mode, you realize that the engine braking is actually quite sharp and for some people it might need getting used to. But if you're an enthusiast, I think you will enjoy it quite well. In terms of the physical brakes, the pedal feel, it's a bit spongy, but the bite is predictable, so nothing ever gets unnerving. There is no eco mode. Like I said, there are no driving modes, there's no eco mode either. But there is an eco indicator or a big screen on the virtual instrumentation uh, that will tell you if you are driving in a fuel efficient manner or not. And that could come in handy for some. 
Uh, also, when you're driving in the city, you will realize that the proximity sensors or the parking sensors are a bit too eager at city speeds. So even when the objects aren't very close to you, in you know the, uh, the traffic jams or even in uh, moderately heavy traffic, you'll realize that the parking sensors are going off uh, every now and then. And that sort of gets irritating because it also sort of drops the audio on, uh, on your music system. And yeah, it can get a bit irritating. Now, since we are talking about driving it in the city, well, the ground clearance has now gone down compared to the outgoing Octavia. But it's not been a matter of worry. I don't know if the shorter, the slightly shorter wheelbase comes into play here, but I have not scraped the underbelly of this car on some of the taller speed humps that I've driven this car on. So I don't think the reduced ground clearance is that much of a worry. Unless you're going to be packing in five people in this car and all their luggage, maybe then it might just become a bit of a problem. So unless you need to drive on extremely bad roads, the new Octavia should do just fine. Now in a sea of crossovers and SUVs, a stiffly sprung sedan, well, it's not going to survive. And that's the reason why the Octavia has gone softer than before. What that translates into is a fair bit of vertical movement when you're driving over undulated surfaces or when you're taking corner at speed or when you're driving around winding roads. But all of those body movements are predictable. They are not unnerving. So once you get used to it, having fun with this car shouldn't be a problem at all, even if you are a driving enthusiast. If you aren't a driving enthusiast, you will enjoy the supple ride that this car has to offer. In fact, it's quite supple, surprisingly supple in fact, for a European sedan and that's great news on our roads. I'm also glad that Skoda went with a 17-inch wheel instead of an 18 or a 19 because that again contributes to giving you that nice cushy ride. Even on some of the sharper bumps, you don't get any kind of thudding into the cabin, which again is good news. At highway speeds, however, at triple digit speeds, however, the car has a bit of a floaty feel to it. And I don't think that's anything to do with the size of the tires or the way the suspension is set up, but I think it's more to do with how the steering is. It just doesn't weigh up to my liking. I would have liked a little bit more weight once you get up to higher speeds. And I think that is where having driving modes that alter these kind of things would have really made a difference to the car's behavior, the overall dynamic of the car. Speaking of the steering, the Octavia features Skoda's new two-spoke design which doesn't feel very different to hold or function than a conventional wheel. After spending two days and a few hundred kilometers behind this wheel, I can safely conclude that the new Octavia means business. Sure, the lack of some new age essentials like driving modes, ventilated seats, connected tech, a 360-degree camera, etc. may not make this car as value for money as you would expect an Octavia to be. For that very reason, owners of range-topping third-gen Octavias may not find the new one to be a convincing upgrade. But it is a worthy contender for anyone looking to upgrade from smaller sedans or even the older Loras, Octavias and Jettas for that matter. In that sense, as before, the Octavia continues to be a more sensible alternative to compact luxury cars if a practical and premium family sedan is what you're looking for. To that effect, there is enough kit and premium feel in this car to make it a very compelling buy.